mocking Israel because we are Israel. We got we we can make the same mistake. You, each one of us has to examine your own self and your own mind. And your, you don't examine your neighbor. Don't go peek in your neighbor's windows to see if you can find something they're doing. That, that's not right. God didn't tell us to go peek in their windows. God didn't say go clean your neighbor's doorstep. You know, if there's sin in the church, we have to do something about it. Don't, forget, don't get me wrong there. But we don't go to our neighbor's house and peek in the window and bring it back to the church. That's not what God's calling us to do. He said, examine your own doorstep. Make sure what you're doing is right. He says, if you get, he says, you pick that uh, to get that splinter out of your out of your neighbor's eye. You need to get the pole out of your own eye first. Remember that. When you're upset with your neighbors, with your church people, when you're upset with them, you, you need to be careful because you're, you're picking at the, at the splinter. You need to look at the pole in your own eye before you get upset with your church people. <laughs> I'm guilty too. Don't look. Don't think I'm all this. I'm not all that. As Paul says, I have not attained. But we're marching to that. Jesus is speaking to our hearts. That's why he said it today through me. He wants you to look in your heart. Don't look at my heart. Don't look at your neighbor's heart. Look at your own heart. The truth shall make you free. That's the title of this next paragraph. Then Jesus said to the Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Yeah, you know, I used to drink and smoke. There's still a lot of other things that I, I don't care to talk about. But God has set me free from those things. Can I go back to those things in, in my own free will? Why would I want to do that? I'd be a nut. I mean, I could. I've got the free will to do it. But God has blessed me, and He's given me everything. I can't accept. I can't say that I, I've earned one of those things. As Paul was knocked off his horse on the way to Damascus, I forgot about that part. There's no way he was changing directions. And you can't, you can't change your direction without God. Paul was not looking for God. And today, you have been, you've seen the light. You've heard it come out of my mouth. If you deny it today, you need to read Hebrews chapter 10 very closely. Because it says if you deny Christ, then you've denied your Savior. That's the unpardonable sin. The sin of unbelief is unpardonable. Because how can you get to... Even murder is pardonable. Everything is pardonable except for if you don't allow Jesus to come in and make that change. Invite, he's, he's inviting you to, to invite Him in. There's a saying that I used to really love it. I don't use it so much anymore. But I took the first step. God took the second step. I took the first step. God took the second step. By the time I got to the third step, I guess I, I figured out God took that first step. He's taking it today. All, everybody who's hear, hearing me in, 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 in the hearing of my voice, He is taking it. Amen. He loves you or He wouldn't have... You know, when He was hanging on the cross... God, His Father, had to pull away from Him. The absence of, the, the opposite of evil is not good. They, people like to say, well, there's evil and there's good in the world. No, the evil is the absence of God. It's not the opposite of evil. I said that right. But anyway, I'll see the video later. Uh, I'm not like John or the rest of everybody. I don't mind watching myself. <laughs> I don't know if that's arrogance or what, but it doesn't bother me. Uh, I'm not. Anyway. So, the apps, this is what people understand. I'm going to close it. I'm going to wrap it up real quick. Can you repeat what you just said? I'm fixing to. Oh, cheapers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the. God, the absence of God, I mean, evil is not the opposite of good. Evil is the absence of God. The same is, as heat, as cold. There's no such thing as cold. Cold is the absence of heat. 
And there's no such thing as darkness. Darkness is the absence of light. Evil is the absence of God. The human race is, has asked God to step away. We ask why does good things, bad things happen to good people? If you read scripture, there are no good people. Even babies are born sin in sin. You ever seen how toddlers act with each other? Man, that would be brutal. <laughs> Take, it's mine. <laughs> babies are innocent, but, but they, they have sin. Now, to take that a little bit further, when, you, when, some, when bad, bad things happen to good people, it's not because God, God has allowed it, yes, because He's been asked, ever since Adam and Eve sinned, God was asked to, to step away from the human race. If God pulled Himself away from, I mean, if God brought Himself back into the human race now and said, okay, I'm going to fix everything, there is not, there's not one pocket of perfection in anywhere in the world and they have tried it several times to make things perfect. And there's not, there's no pockets of perfection ever been. Human beings screw it up. I don't like to use that word but that's the only one I can think of right now. Human beings mess things up. So God has to show Satan and all the people, I mean he could have just got rid of Satan said, you're out of here. You could have just destroyed him. But that's not the way God, God is, is love. That's not one of his attributes. That's what he is. He's love. So, in order to show that God's plan is perfect, God has to let the experiment play out. And look at our world today. We're at the end of time. We have 6,000 years of sin. And this earth... I don't, I don't like what I see. Do y'all like what you see when you look at the news? When you, you, you can't walk down the street in some places. You, you put your life in your hands. God did not intend the human race to be like this. He created, created us in His image. And ever since Adam decided that he was going to go his own way, from God dependence to self dependence, we have... Uh, We've gone downhill, so we got 6,000 years of sin. We are the, the lowliest of the low today. That's why it's hard. To say. What does it say in Jeremiah 17, 9? That we, that's worth reading, and then I'm going to close. This is, this is bad news, but it's really good news because God is... It says, the heart is deceitful. And, and see, if you learn this about yourself, this is, this is good therapy. Because you know your heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I told a man that one time. And he says, he got, he, he was a little upset. I'm not wicked. You know, God knows us better than we know ourselves. If there is no law, you're not Christian. Very good, Jim. Yeah. Well, this guy claimed to be, his, be a Christian. So, he doesn't understand that, you know, the law is there to show us our wickedness. It's not there to make us holy. The law shows us our weakness. It shows us how, how we are. We can read this verse. But with Jesus Christ, it's just, it, we, we are we considered perfect. Without Jesus, and this is the good news of the gospel, and this is why He came and died. Because if God could have changed His law, then it was, it's no, there was no need for Jesus to die. If God could have said, okay, I'll just change the law. Hey, I'm God, I can do anything. But you know, God is true to Himself. God is not a liar. And God wants beings to live with Him forever who He can depend on and trust. And the only way that He's going to have these beings is, is that these beings, us, allows His Holy Spirit to reside within them. Because without His Holy Spirit, if you have any doubt that the Holy Spirit is in your life today, ask Him. Ask Him now. Talk to Him tonight. Amen. When you're, I used to, when I, I'd be drinking a beer, I'd be high, drinking. And I'd, I'd talk to God and I'd say, God, I said, please don't take me today. I said, I don't want to meet you like this. <laughs> God is always talking to us. <clears throat> always. No, no matter what, what state you're in, we, you can drown it out. And that's the reason, okay, let's have another one. Let's have another one. Let's just drown God out. 
And we have. We've walked around. Away, we've walked away from God, and God has let us do it. And if I had more time, I, I you know, I could go all day. I want to. Uh, anyway, I'm going to stop right here. But it's good. This is the good news of the gospel: is that Jesus has made a way for the human race to do what they cannot do for themselves. If you think you can save yourself, if you think you're going to clean yourself up and then come to God, you're going to be a miserable person. I don't know. I, if you, if you, is there anybody here without sin that I need to? I mean, because if you are, it's a, it's a blessing. It would be a blessing. But I, the, the Bible would call you a liar. Not me. I don't have to call you a liar. The Bible says that he, he who says he's without sin and it uses the word liar. We are all fallen. But we all have hope. And that hope is our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And I would ask each person here to, to, to plead. And Mrs. White says, we will fight terrible battles with ourselves. Pleading. And that's where I'll end. Our closing song is number 205.